Today is April 23rd, and April 21st is Ira Leuven's birthday. For the past few years, I've uploaded a Leuven Brothers song on Ira's birthday in April, and then Charlie's birthday uh, a couple of months later. Um, two days late this year, if you follow us on um, any of the other channels, uh, Celebrating Appalachia, the Presley Girls, or the Blind Pig and the Acorn blog, then you know that my mom has been in the hospital for a while. So this is my first day back home. Today's, like I said, it's the 23rd, and it's my first day back home since I came home briefly on the 13th to sing for a friend's wedding. Other than that, it's my, my first day back home since April 11th. And I uh, just came home to tidy up here a little bit. I'm, I'm up at Mom's house right now shooting this. She has better lighting than I have in my house, for one thing. But I just came back home to tidy up a few things here, and I'll go back um, down to the hospital where she is tomorrow. And we appreciate everybody's prayers and, and well wishes. And she is doing really well, staying in high spirits and just fighting really hard. And hopefully she's going to get to... Uh, get better and get to come home um, at some point. If not this week, then Lord willing next week. Having said that, I'll move on to this year's video for Ira Leuven. And um, this song is a song that I had heard for quite a few years before I knew that Ira wrote it and before I heard the Leuven Brothers, a recording of them sing it singing it and the song is Seven Year Blues and the first time I ever heard this song it was Reno and Smiley and I heard a number of other bluegrass groups uh, doing the song before I learned that it was actually a Leuven Brothers song they released it I believe before they went on Capitol back in kind of their early days when they were having songs like the Get Acquainted Waltz they had a, a sound at that point that was a little more bluegrass had a, a real bluegrassy fiddle on most of their, their cuts. Uh, it's a really good song. Um, I've always liked it. Dad and I have a video on this same channel. You can see uh, me singing the song with Dad. And uh, my nephew, Ben, is also playing the guitar on that. And we almost try to play a little bitty uh, sort of duet uh, on the guitar in that song. That's not where you're going to hear in this video. In this video, I'm going to share... A studio recording that uh, Pap and I made together in the early 2000s and the picture that I'll put up while you're hearing that is it's not the best picture but it is a picture that was taken around that time as I said in the early 2000s um, of all the different versions that I've heard of Seven Year Blues I think probably the best one if, if not the Lumen Brothers version then the best version is actually the Webster Brothers version you should be able to find that online, and they they just did a phenomenal um, take on the song. Uh, they sang the song in C major right there, and I will share with you that when Pap and I sang the song, which was well before I ever heard the Webster Brothers, uh, their recording, he always wanted me to move the song up to C, and I insisted on keeping it in B or B flat um, for whatever reason uh, when I was... Uh, in my 30s, early 30s, I wanted to try to sing low for some reason and maybe impress people with how low I could sing. Also, if you hear the Leuven Brothers version of it, uh, Charlie's voice seems kind of uh, pretty low. And um, he's always been one of my heroes, so maybe I was trying to sound a little more like him. I don't know. But Pap was right. We really should have moved the song on up to C and give his tenor a chance to really soar it would have been no problem for him, and that's where the Webster Brothers sang the song was in C. Uh, I almost had forgotten that Pap and I recorded this in a studio. We never put it out on a CD or anything. Uh, we just listened to it ourselves until my nephew Ben told me that he thought it was one of the best things we'd ever recorded. I was kind of shocked by that, um, and so then that made me give it a second listen and decide to share it here with you. Uh, ben mentioned in particular that he really liked the guitar break in that. That also surprised me. I played the guitar in the G position, mostly on the top three strings. 
but um, anyway, you'll hear all of that shortly. When I do these yearly videos about IRA or a tribute to IRA, uh, I was just thinking it's almost surprising that I tend to focus more on him as a songwriter. He was one of the best musicians ever, especially for his time, and positively as good of harmony singer as there ever was or probably ever will be. But it seems like when I do these videos, I, I tend to focus more on his songwriting. And that's what I'm going to do uh, in this video for a little bit, and then you'll get to hear uh, Pap and I sing Seven Year Blues. You can, of course, jump ahead, jump ahead to that if you, if you want. In terms of the brilliance of Iris' songwriting, um, you know, mainly it would be just his uh, ability, to, ability to, to create and assemble these amazing melodies, also these great lyrics, whether it be a, a, a beautiful gospel song, song of praise, or a love song, um, cheating song, what, a funny song. He wrote a lot of comedic songs. No matter what type of song, his lyrics uh, were never weak in any, any way. They were always superb. Great rhymes, great meaning, um, just very poetic. But what I want to talk about in this video is something that might seem a little odd to you. Um, Ira was never afraid to uh, just be real honest in his songs. He even talked about um, standing in, a, in line in a liquor store in a gospel song. When it came to love songs, uh, most of the country love songs, they're about uh, someone else cheating. Usually your, your, your lover, your partner cheating on you or your wife. Um, Ira wrote songs both ways. He wrote them from the perspective of someone who was done wrong he also wrote them from the perspective of the one who did wrong and cheated on on the wife or the uh, you know the significant other. Uh, as a lit major, that almost makes me think of Edgar Allan Poe, who uh, kind of um, set precedent writing s several uh, pieces from the perspective of the bad guy, of the murderer. Most people wrote those kinds of stories in third person. Poe was willing to write them in first person, which made it really fascinating in terms of the, the psychology and getting to see into the mind of the bad guy. Um, Ira was not only afraid of, not afraid of doing that, he was also not afraid of contradiction. And uh, normally I wouldn't think of contradicting yourself as a good thing, but when you're dealing with love songs and when you're dealing with emotions and matter of the, matters of the heart, uh, you can feel one way one minute and another way a different minute. Or you can claim you feel one way, but then you can kind of betray yourself and, and that honesty can come out to reveal that, no, actually you feel a different way and that was more of just putting on a front. Uh, there's several examples of this in Iris' songs. Um, he wrote a song called When I Loved You. Um, it's a good song. I wouldn't say it's necessarily one of his best songs, but a good song. Uh, the Malpass Brothers covered it. Several other people have covered it. And in that song, the uh, second verse, I believe it is, or one of the verses, says, You've asked, you say that you need me more than you need life. And you've asked me to cheat her and meet you. First time I ever heard that, I thought, that's, that's a pretty smart line. That's, some thought has gone into that. And uh, if you think about it, that's something anybody maybe should consider if they're uh, having an affair with someone who's already committed to someone else. It should maybe cross their mind, oh, if, if this person has really kind of vowed and committed to another person, but they're willing to betray them and be with me, wouldn't they, wouldn't they just do the same thing to me in the right situation? Could I ever really trust them? Uh, so that's the perspective in that song. But in other songs, like um, uh, I Know I'm in Love for the First Time in Life, and also the Masterpiece song, which I hope to upload one day, 
of um, what is the song? I take the chance in those songs, I re reverses that and flips that and is very hopeful that the person he's cheating with will not doubt his love and loyalty and commitment to them. So you could say that that's trying to have it two ways, uh, maybe, or maybe uh, just writing from two different perspectives. One perspective in the song I just sang is, hey, you had your chance, I'm married, I'm committed, I'm not going to betray those vows, and you shouldn't even want me to because what would that say about me? That's that perspective in that song. In the other songs, it's, you know, hey, I just love you so much that I'm willing to sacrifice my reputation, my pride, give all that up, wreck my, wreck my home, destroy my home because I love you so much and don't ever doubt that I would always be committed to you. So two very different kind of contradictory takes on, on those situations. Now in Seven Year Blues, the contradiction comes within the same song, not in comparing two different songs. Uh, as you listen to the song, you'll hear a line early in the song that says, uh, I've waited seven years today, you know, today marks seven years that I've waited on you. Um, I could never live these awful blues another seven years. So saying, hey, I've waited on you all this time. I can't wait anymore. It's over. But then you're going to hear late in the same song, if I could, if I could live that long, I'd wait 10,000 years. So total uh, about face, and that's probably being more uh, more honest. And the first time, it's sort of trying to put on that brave front of, "Hey, I'm I'm done with you." But then at the end, you know, I'm really not. <laughs> and I just think that's such a uh, such a cool thing that you don't see a lot of songwriters do. Uh, that contradiction that does happen in real life because of your emotions and you're not always thinking uh, logically and you're not making the best decisions, you're, you're following your emotions and your, your passion. Um, but you can see that in some of Ira's songs that he was willing to do that. I don't know if anyone at the time, whether that be Charlie or one of the other guys in the band or somebody recording it, thought about pointing out uh, well, wait a minute, Ira, you just said that, you know, you couldn't wait another seven years. Now you're saying you'd wait 10,000. You can't do that. You can't contradict yourself. Or if they just didn't question the genius and, hey, he writes the songs and we play the songs and sing the songs and we leave that up to him. I don't know. It would be interesting to find out. But Ira Leuven, definitely um, one of the greatest songwriters of all time, whether you're talking about gospel, uh middle of the road country music, bluegrass music, comedic music, guy could write anything. It, it didn't matter. He could write <laughs> easy listening. Who knows if he had lived longer, uh, what other kinds of uh, songs he could have uh, written and shared with the world. Um, just wanted to share all that information. I'll shut up now and let you hear me and Pap singing Seven Year Blues uh, in honor of Ira Leuven's birthday. April 21st, 1924. I may have to edit this out. Somewhere in the, the mid 20s. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this. <laughs>
Oh 